everybody, and welcome to TBK Creative Social Webinar Series. I'm Andrew Schiestel, the Chief of WOW Projects at TBK Creative. We're a national award-winning web design and social media marketing agency based in Toronto and London, Canada. I, I want to um, share with everybody the topic today. It's, 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 and I'm, it's, this is really cool. It's the three secrets to creating Canada's happiest company and exploding in growth while doing it. I have a guest expert who joins me. It's a personal friend of mine. It's someone I respect a lot in business and in life. Tony Guerreri, the CEO at Roma Molding. Tony's waiting to dive into this conversation with me and I'm excited to have him here. Before, before I, I have him hop on the call though, I want to give you a little background on, on who Roma Molding is. Roma Molding is a 29-year-old Toronto-based company. They're one of the world's largest picture framing manufacturers. They have four offices in Canada and the U.S. They employ over 150 staff. They've, they've managed to stay, as, stay a private company, which is phenomenal. And they ha have a dealer network, and I'm very impressed by this. They successfully manage a dealer network of over 6,000 independent picture framing companies. And they have, like, re they've really established great partnerships throughout the world. With all that ado, I'm, I'm delighted to have Tony on the call. Whenever this guy hops on a phone call I, or just enters a room, you know, the, the ex, there's, a, there's an experience that really gets created. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited for what's going to get created over the next hour. Welcome to the call, Tony. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Good afternoon, actually. Yeah, hey, buddy. Um, hey, Tony, before we dive into some of the, the uh, what we want to create for everybody uh, in terms of some of your great content, can I, can I share with everybody how you and I met? Absolutely. I think that'd be a great uh, opening segue for sure. Yeah, yeah. And if if and if it didn't go like this, chime in and and uh, and t and tell me how it went for you. But this is exactly what I remember, and I think it's I think it's a, a prudent I think it's a a, a prudent uh, context to create for everybody for for the type of guy that you are. Um, I get a phone call, uh, everybody, from my my business partner Melissa McInerney here at TBK Creative, uh, one of our great, great, our great creative director here at the company. And I'm, I'm, actually, on, I'm actually on the golf course. And uh, Melissa says to me, um, I got a call from this Tony guy. Uh, and he's really excited. And he's, and he's talking about a future that he's creating. And he needs a website for, for, for his company. Can you call him right now? <laughs> and, and I said, Mel, no, I'm on the golf course. Tell him I'll, I'll call him back. And she said, no, he's, he's really adamant about this. He's, he's, he's persistent. He's telling me to, uh, that, I, that I need to give him a call. There's big plans in the works, and there's a future that he's creating. Um, I got back to my, my office at, at 7 in, in the evening, past hours, and something um, told me that I should actually give, give the Tony uh, a call. And I, and I still at the time didn't really know who he was. I, 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 Mel didn't tell me what the company was, but it was really important. I I left a message for, for you, Tony, as you remember, and, uh, and then in, in your, in your uh, working ethics style, you gave me a call back on Saturday afternoon, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and you told me about what you and your great team was up to in the world, and as you know, I got really inspired by that, and we, we kept the conversation going. Uh, it eventually turned into a great new, uh, great new partnership with our agency and, and your, your company, and uh, we're really creating some really big things in the web space together, which I'm very proud of and I'm really excited about and my entire team is. But the funny thing, the really funny thing and, uh, that happened on the first time we first call, as you said to me, um, Andrew, I don't know how we met, but we're friends on Facebook. And I really like your culture because I see your posts all the time and you see, seem like a great person. Your culture is a jive. And uh, so I want to I take this conversation further. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, it was actually exactly like that. And uh, <laughs> you know, I remember I remember sharing with you that you know our vision of what our company was, and I said we weren't normal. Um, yeah. We're, we're we're probably not going to be easy on you, yeah. and we're going to probably test uh, the limits that you potentially know yeah. and far supersede anything you've you've uh, you've potentially done in your career to date. Are you interested? Yeah, and and it kind of went like that, and and I I, I you know it, on that call you lit up, and and I knew at that moment you were up for the challenge. Yeah, yeah, and I think one of the reasons why you wanted to form the partnership with us is uh, there obviously is a synergy in culture. Uh, that's something that 
you know, as an agency, as a team, we don't always know how things are going to go, but we're willing to uh, really dive in and, and work our butt off to accomplish that, that unknown. And that's something that really excites me. I know it's something that really excites you. And I think it's a really great segue into some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, there's a lot of changes right now in, in the business world. And um, I think it's more important than ever that uh, businesses are really um, open to, to trying things in new and different ways. So I think that's really important and that's something that excited me about working with uh, your company. So let's, let's go back for a minute, Tony, for everybody. Let's, let's maybe, um, if you want to start at this point, talk about a little bit more about Roma Molding. You can even start with some of the basics so everyone understands your, your basics behind what product you sell uh, to what marketplace. Maybe start there. Um, but then I, I really want you to share with everybody the story of what Roma Molding was was going through, and uh, and then and then what what needed to change and what did change uh, a few years ago. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I think that's a great start, um, and and I'll uh, make it very concise so we can all get it. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know who we are, we're a picture frame manufacturing company. We uh, distribute to, like Andrew said, 6,000 frame shops across the country, Canada and U.S. in various countries like Australia and Singapore. Um, we've done that through a, a great dealer network of incredible human beings who have been loyal to us since day one. And that's really been uh, a very important you know, step in, in, in our growth. Um, the company is owned and operated by a family business, so it happens to be my father and uh, my uncle, who started the company back in the early days. And it kind of wasn't that early, but um, that was kind of the mentality. Uh, it, it started in 1984 um, by two you know, immigrants from Italy who came over and wanted to have a better, you know, give something better to their children that, that they never had the possibility to create in Italy. And uh, coming over, they created a company and started distributing very locally in, in, in uh, Ontario. And they actually bought from our um, competitors, who are our competitors today. So it's actually a remarkable story. Worked their way up and um, you know, built a great network of customers emerging into the U.S. market and, and really growing the business and driving the sales. Um, really one brick and mortar at, the, at, a, at a time and really forging great partnerships and relationships one step at a time. Hmm. Um, but if you can recall, back in the early days, um, words like culture never existed, or they existed but not into the context that we use it today. And culture, for at that point, meant you know what language you spoke, or or what flag you bared, or um, you know what type of foods you ate. Um, but today, culture is very different. And um, our mm. fathers, our fathers built this business based on what they knew with very little education and both didn't have any post-secondary education, much like many stories are today. Um, and then throughout the ages, uh, you know, my, my business partner today, Joseph Talata, who, are, who is our COO of the company, he joined the company five years before I did as second generation in the company with our father still on board. And then five years later, uh, I, I jumped on board once I completed university. Um, at that point, we were, you know, two young guys and uh, who who were, you know, kind of it was just entrenched. You know, once you're done university, come into the you know come into the family business and kind of do as I say, and and uh, everything will kind of be okay. And we did that for a better part of, or I did it for a better part of 12 years. Joey did a little little longer, but it, it came to one point, Andrew, where um, hmm. the strategies that they adopted. Uh, you know, some 15 years ago uh, weren't working anymore. And uh, we've seen a, a complete shift in that. And um, so what do you do when something doesn't work? You try harder. But we kept trying the same things and, and expecting for different results. And, and that was catastrophic. Mm. And if you can see the faces of these uh, workers, now I say Roman in the early days. Now this is just a illustration of of the type of sediment that people felt around here, it was a job. It was a place you came, you earned your income, and you went home. Right. There's nothing more than that. Right. And um, so I remember, you know, starting to 
to read and starting to, you know, interact and starting to look at different things. And, you know, and, and my life started getting challenging and I started questioning my own life. And, and, and I said to myself, is this, is this what I want for the rest of my life? And I remember sitting back in my chair and saying, you know, this can't be it. You know, work can't hurt all the time. Uh, it, it can't be a place that is a battlefield. You know, I'm not enrolled in that conversation. That's not something I aspire to. And I, sh and I sure am not, you know, going to spend another 20 years of my life doing it this way. I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. And, um, you yeah. know, I'm sure a lot of people felt that way. And what I did at that point, Andrew, was um, I actually checked out of my own family business. And um, and what that means is I actually walked down to my father's office one day when I had had it, and I said, um, "Yeah, it's it's I'm done. I'm uh, I'm done here, and uh, I love you guys. I love every single human being here, but I, I just can't do it anymore. I'm not happy. It's affecting my personal life. It's affecting everything around me. And uh, I spoke to my father very candidly, and I said, Dad, this this can't be life. And you know, from a hard immigrant worker." This is all he knew. So yeah, this was that was life. <laughs> that was life. You know, yeah. work has to hurt. Yeah. You know, if you want to get where you need to get to, it's got to yeah. be hard. And and you know, those are the conversations of our parents. Yeah. Uh, but lo and behold, I, I actually went to him and I said, I've been reading up on different companies and they're having a lot of fun. Why aren't we? Right. And uh, and, and you know, we went into an inquiry around what that meant, and I said, here's the thing. Um, I'd love to stay on board, but I can't stay on board in the current condition. Uh, if you'd like, I could stay on board, but we have to change the culture around here. And he looked at me, what do you mean the culture? I said, well, let me take you through this inquiry, this exploration around different companies. And and at that point, he took, wow. he took me up on the offer and said, okay, I'm willing to learn a little bit. Tell me, tell me what's there. And so, you know, over several discussions and several days, believe me, it was very difficult. Uh, and, and one day we were heading to Las Vegas and I said, we need to go to this company called Zappos.com and they're an online shoe store that sells uh, shoes all across the world. Hmm. He said, what do you mean? People buy shoes online? And I said, yeah. Hmm. Okay. He said, okay, we're there anyways. Let's go check it out. So we went to Zappos.com and if anybody knows about their culture, um, driven by a great man called Tony Shea, you'll quickly notice they are, uh, an, an internet marvel they they do 1.2 million in uh in uh, in billion one, sorry 1.2 billion with a and, with big b yeah, with a big b yeah, yeah. 1.2 billion in uh in annual revenue yeah um and, and uh, so we went there and the culture was over the top people high-fiving you you walk in they offer you a red bull a water a beer a coffee i mean it was just freedom and uh, quickly walking through, you'll see streamers and bowling pins. and But you also seen people really happy. All I seen was smiles. So wow. contrary to this picture that we see here in the early days, people were smiling and happy and high-fiving. Yeah. And at that moment, I looked at my father and said, this is it. This is what we need. This is what we need. We got great people. We just got to make them happy. Mm. Tony, did your father um, at right away – uh, see it or did or was or did that take some time was there a lot of conversations before because I'm you know I'm just picturing someone who who built up a company over 29 years and then their son comes in and says everything you you you've done doesn't work anymore so we want to now do a do a 180 did you get any pushback from your father uh, that's a great question um, and the short answer is absolutely <laughs> um, that's, that's the short answer. <laughs> so, so kind of what happened when I took him to Zappos and I turned to him and said, this is what we need. He said, okay, well, if you're going to do all this and all these streamers and all this party, I'm out of here, man. I, I, that's so <laughs> foreign to me. I, oh, yeah, no, yeah, I just do it. I, I'll step aside. And, yeah. and you know, once the, the shock Great. wore off and, and we went through the tour and we heard <laughs> that people are happy and producing extraordinary results, but my father's a smart man. And or else he wouldn't have built the company he built. And he quickly seen that something had to change and this might be it. He seen my passion, that I was so determined for this, and gave me the opportunity. Great, great. So now since then, what are, um, 
what are some of the results that, that you can that you can see and report from a more of a metric sense since this big culture shift that that you want to call it or this big paradigm shift within the company? What has actually been some of the results that you're you're seeing and, and can report on? Well, let me tell you, some of the results um, are are very tangible and very real. Um, I, I would say some of the results, uh, you know, we look at life differently now through a different set of eyeballs, I would say. And here, I'll take you through the next slide. And we actually look at things called success, and we challenge each other. And we're always up to, to upping the game and delivering what we call wow, um, a wow experience or wow service. Great. And, yep. and we're really clear, uh, Andrew, we're really clear that the only thing you have in your company is your brand, your amazing people, and your dynamic culture. Mm. Those are things that no one can take away from any company out there, whether you're Starbucks or you're Apple or you're Google. You know, no one can copy those, those three things. But we are really clear that everything else, if done correctly, will be copied. We're like crystal clear on that. Great, yeah. And so what we've done is we've really focused on our brand, our people, and our culture. And um, although still delivering great product. And so some of, the, some of the tangible results have been since 2008, our company has had, you know, double-digit declines in sales. So you can imagine how quickly that amounts to uh, um, an erosion of revenue, an erosion of, uh, you know, goals and, and, and hitting goals and things of that nature. Well, today what the story's been is we're actually uh, operating at about a 12.5% uh, increase this year mm. but if you look at the swing from year over year you know if we were down 15 to 20 percent last year well that's actually close to a 30 percent swing in one complete year which is is anything but easy but totally possible if you align your brand your people and your culture mm -hmm. um, some other tangible results have been um, you know, our error rate has gone down 25% on average in every department. We have a 99% fulfillment rate in our inventory levels. Um, our retention rate is through the roof. You know, one of the biggest challenges uh, any CEO or any HR, com uh, any HR department has is attaining and attracting great people. I got to say we're blessed with um, any ad that we put out or any anything of, of the matter, um, our inboxes are flooded with incredible human beings, with with people that believe in what we believe, want to challenge the status quo, and people that want to really be a part of something greater. And um, you know, in years past, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be um, unusual to spend upwards of thirty to fifty thousand dollars in recruitment fees, depending on you know, the various levels, uh, uh, you know, of what you're looking for in your company. Um, to date, I, I'm really proud of our team through the various programs we put in place. We've used zero dollars to recruit to our team. And um, if that's not real dollars, I don't know what is. And what, right. we, what we do with that is we just continue to reinvest in our people to ensure that they're super happy. And... Um, I don't know about you, but happy people is, is who I want to be around all day. Great. And, and so when can you maybe for everybody talk about just quickly the timeline. So when did you then start this cultural shift? I, I just want to get a sense of was this a five-year project for everybody? Was this a two-year? Um, How far are you into this, this cultural paradigm shift right now? Uh, this happened uh, in 2011, and it was actually March 1st of 2011. So if you fast forward March 1st to 2011, um, you'll see it's anywhere from 16 to, I would say, 19 months. So it's, it's been a relatively short period of time um, that we've actually, you know, shifted. We've really, you know, I, when you think of it, when you picture it, uh, we've really changed course, changed direction. And um, with every day that we push forward, um, it just propels quicker and quicker and quicker, and uh, some of the neat things that are happening are incredible. Yeah, let's talk about some of the actual actions now. Um, you know, we talk about 
concern. That's a very, uh, it's a very broad, broad term. Um, specific things that at least I can speak to, things that I see, and it's, I think it's, it's neat because I'm on the outside um, of, your, of your company in that respect. Um, you know, when I, when I was at your office, something that I saw that was uh, mar markedly different than a lot of, of businesses that we go into every day is uh, you're in the middle right now of tearing down office walls. So, I, so that's one thing that's really neat. So, when, so everybody, when you walk into Roma Molding, beautiful office in, in north of Toronto in, in Woodward, Woodbridge, Ontario, uh, we walk up some steps and you come into this big uh, administrative area and there's actually no silos. Uh, between the departments anymore. It's just one wide open space that's this massively wide, uh, somewhat of a corridor, and there's little kiosks, desks. Uh, uh, oh, probably, Tony, you'll be able to specify, but probably over uh, 100 desks there, and it just goes for, for, for a couple hundred yards. And, uh, and then as you're kind of walking through, um, there's life, there's, uh, there's energy, and there's distinction with, every department. So you've actually separated the department in almost having their own brand. And, and it's my understanding that you've allowed them to uh, create really the, the, that, that unique uh, uh, sub-brand uh, that represents their, their, their culture. Um, TB, our TBK creative team has been working at your office and that was something different definitely uh, when, when starting the relationship uh, with you as a vendor partner. Uh, you invited us to actually come and start working from your office, which I think is really awesome. And uh, we've been having a great time with that. I, I didn't get the chance to be there for a couple of days. I know some of my great team members, Melissa was there and Trevor was there. And they said it was so, so different and energizing. Um, there's uh, Nerf gun wars that actually happened. You actually, I guess, every, every team member has their own Nerf gun in there. And it's full on. Uh, uh, warfare <laughs> in between the different departments at, at any given time in the day, which is so, which is so cool and so different. Uh, what other stuff is going on there, uh, Tony, that you, you, you think is really creating this environment for fun? Um, what, what some of the things that w we've been doing is really, by the way, our, our suggestions from our team, uh, suggestions from the people, because, you know, Ask them. They're they're the ones, you know, in the yeah. culture, and ask them what they want. And believe me, they'll they'll wow you when they're when they're asked. Some of the things we've been doing is um, one initiative we took on is removing every office in our entire workspace. So, mm -hmm. including myself, I'm in the midst of I'm in between our insanely great marketing team and our humanitarian's IT department. Yeah. And it's me and, and Gina Westernacker Schneider, my assistant, and kind of in the middle. And, and oftentimes it's really great. And I'm, I'm often caught in between Nerf wars between the two departments and whatever the case may be. But one of the initiatives is, is to tear down walls and remove offices because we believe walls um, contain and confine. And when you have confinement, there's no sharing. And when you have no sharing, well, there's no energy transfer. And that just leads to, you know, uh, Everything but happiness, we would like to say. Some of the other things we've uh, we've done is we really try to infuse fun. Um, we really take fun seriously. So, uh, in light of fun, we had everybody. Uh, you're able to name your own department and mm. uh, and decorate your department however you like. And so finance, of course, would decorate it with uh, the many dollars. So there's American dollars and Canadian dollars flying around. Our I, our inventory department. Uh, they're called the back order blasters, um, and that's because we have no back orders. Our fulfillment rate is 99%. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's really fun. And and they're really they're the r real ones that are are um, really applauding their own success, which is great. And uh, one of the 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 most recent initiatives is we we are, are foregoing any boardrooms. We don't like that word. Uh, what we've called uh, our rooms are huddle rooms. Since uh, the absence of offices. You do from time to time still need a space where you can either go on a conference call or meet your team or things like that. So we've created uh, currently three, uh, two huddle rooms. We've created two huddle rooms, and we actually did a 48-hour challenge uh, whereby we allow the, uh, anybody who's interested to decorate the two rooms. We've made a contest, of course. We love contests. Okay. Gave uh, $95 as a budget, and you can only use two hours a day for two days. 
uh, although you're allowed to use after hours. So the building and the team building, the camaraderie that we built and the rivalry um, has been incredible. Um, and just to give you a depiction of that, um, that's actually one of our huddle rooms we get to work in. Mm. So you're you're able to see um, a really great space. This is one of the room, and uh, you know our creative team came up with some you know creativity around using our cardboard to make trees and painting and and a few various other things in the in, in our office here. And um, I tell you, it's remarkable when you bring vendors in or clients and you have meetings in there. Suddenly. I don't know the mood, the energy, the, the, the whole aura of the meeting is around happiness versus, okay, what do we need to do? Why do we need to do it? And how are you going to make it cheaper? Um, there's a sense of how can I help? I love being part of this. Uh, so those are a few of the things that we've, uh, we've managed to do, um, mm. you know, in, in, the, in the short time or up, up to date right now. Mm. You know, some business owners listening in or executives, Tony, um, might be looking at this, and they and they, they might be really inspired by um, some of the cool things that that you could do within a company. But some might be saying, you know, this this to me looks like it could get out of control real fast. And I and I have a business here to run, and I have uh, targets that I have to make sure my employees are are hitting. Um, so what do you what do you say to that? How do you still run a, a profitable organization uh, that's that's still driven towards some uh, some some accountability and and making sure that that a good job is well done yeah that's very important and I'm sure it's on the mind of, of many leaders and whether you're a CEO of you're the or you're a leader of a, of a marketing department or IT department you know we still you know how do you get your job done if, if you're in a jungle room or if you're having a <laughs> war and we're in a nerf gun war right yeah or yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of cult, right yeah absolutely um, Here's the thing, you know, one thing, this is a strategy that if you adopt, takes time. And if you're looking for a three-month strategy, how do I, you know, jump sales, it's, it's not the strategy for you. You know, culture is something you've got to believe inside of you, and mm -hmm. it's a long-term strategy. It's something that will be built upon and must grow. Um, it's not something that's immediate. So when we took on culture some 18, 19 months ago, we also took on something we really live by, and that's trust. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that, you know, hangs on our walls everywhere. You need to trust your partners. You know, you need to trust your team. You need to trust yourself. And we hold ourselves to the highest level of accountability here at our company. You know, an example, an example would be, you know, we had a three-page dress code policy, and uh, I'm sure many companies have them. You know, you can't have... Your, your jeans can't be ripped or your, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, our dress code policy is one line, and it states like this. Um, be real, be yourself, and represent the brand well. That's mm -hmm. our dress code policy. And believe it or not, you know, people, if aligned with your culture, will step up to the, you know, will step up to the plate. Um, we have no dress code now, but people still, you know, feel compelled to dress up. And depending on their meetings, they'll they'll do what they need to do to feel great and give people the freedom to be themselves. And believe me, they'll wow you. They'll wow you as well. But more importantly, and I'm going to jump here. Um, like any culture, there's a set of rules. There's a set of guidelines. There's a set of values that must be put in place. No different than. You know, if, if, Andrew, you get in the car today, um, you're, you're able to go through a red light if you'd like. Um, however, there are consequences to going through a red light. You potentially can kill somebody. Um, mm -hmm. You might kill yourself, and you might get yourself in jail. You know, things like that, or get your license taken away. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we did here is we said, we asked everybody, and this is really the foundation, the bedrock of what our culture drives itself on. These are our principles, our core values, something we deeply, deeply believe in. And we call them the 10 family core values. So this is an exercise we did, which took over uh, four to five months. And um, this is kind of our creed. This is what we live by. This is what we hire. This is what we fire by. And now this is even what we use to, um, you know, reward 
our employees and, and talk to them as far as, you know, are you delivering wow service? Are you being different, having fun, and delivering happiness? And using this as a gauge, you know, this was created by the people, for the people. This is not something a CEO in some room can create himself or herself. This is something developed entirely through uh, through the people. And it's mm -hmm. over a prolonged period of time. So if someone today is feeling, well, I should say be humble. Then in six months from now, humble is not important to them. We really take the time and commitment to create these. Right. But once created, and, and by the way, these core values are unique to Roma. No one else will have the exact same core values because this is what's important in our culture. Maybe other cultures, it's, um, you know, something different. Uh, maybe learning and pursuing growth and development is not as important as um, doing more with less or, or whatever the case may be. Tony, what's the exercise then? Can you recommend to um, any executive listening in, what, what, what is the actual exercise that, that they can go through with their, with their company, with their team to draw out the real core values versus just you know, copying what, what you have here on the piece of paper? Sure. Um, and that's a good question. We're actually in the midst. Uh, we got this great website company. You might know them, TBK. Um, <laughs> once our website company is uh, up and running with our website, which is going to be a while, by the way, um, mm. there'll be a whole section on culture. And we want to share with other companies exactly how we did it because we're committed to changing this world to a happier place. So um, it's not up yet, so I'll, I'll share it with you now. What we did as a, as a company is whether it's through whether it's through email or whether it's um, a line employee who doesn't have access to email, um, we've given everybody an opportunity to tell us what you what are your values in life? What do you value? Some people value trust. Some people valued loyalty. Some people valued teamwork and family and and passion and and to be driven. And so imagine, I mean, we had over 157 different um, different words that described what their values were. Wow. And, and that happened once, and we gave a timeline and a deadline, yeah. and it was to be immediately emailed to myself, not to be you know, copied to anybody else, so that it was very anonymous. Um, mm. I wasn't interested in who said what. I was more interested in what was being said. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, if you have 150 or so employees, a lot of people will say, um, you know, uh, deliver great communication. So you might get that five times, but the fact of the matter is you accumulate those, and so we had 157 of them. We did that exercise for three different times. Probably with, we staggered them within a month and a half to two months. Okay. And, and we asked the same question. And oftentimes we got different, different values, which was great. And so we compiled everything, and as a small committee, as a small team, we kind of codified what all those 157 meant. Um, because there's five different ways to say communicate, right? We should talk to each other or we should, uh, you know, there's many different ways, but in the end, it's communication. So from there, then we came up with what we felt was a best representation of what the core values were as a, as a body, as a, as a complete group. And then we emailed these out to the team. We emailed these out to the team and, um, and asked for their feedback and ask them, do these represent who you are? And we had small tweaks here and there. And we were really, uh, we were really compassionate in learning what their values are. And it was until we were satisfied and that the people were satisfied with the core values that we actually determined them to be core values, meaning the core of what we believe to be the fundamental like building blocks of our company and what was going to get us to the next level. Mm. Mm hmm now, now, how do you handle then when um, when when an employee is is operating inconsistent with those core? Values? What is, is do you do you have any type of uh, disciplinary method in, in the company anymore? How do you manage that side of things when when yourself or other employees are just not operating consistent with core values? Yeah, that, that's a great uh, question, and um, it's it's often a hard topic. But I'm going to be as transparent as possible because I'm committed. To, to happiness in the workplace and, mm -hmm. and people caring and, and success. Um, you know, inheriting a 28-year-old company, it comes with some baggage. And it comes with di various different people who you, for all intents and purposes, or myself, have not hired. And they were hired based on a different set 
of core value. There weren't any. Can yeah. you do the, you know, it was kind of, can you do the job? Yeah. Can you start Monday? Yep. Okay, great. You're hired. And, yeah. and many companies, depending on, now I'm being exaggerating a bit, but many companies, depending on where you are, you're really compelled to, oh my God, this person's so great. They have the skill. They have, you know, they have the know-how. Wow, we'd get so far ahead. But do they have the culture? Mm. So what we did as a team and as leaders is we looked at who on your team is the best representation of the core values and who isn't. Yeah. And and let's work with our team. Let's share where they're at. And, you know, Andrew, there's going to be some people who believe in what you believe. And then there's going to be some who just aren't enrolled in a culture-based company. Remember, this is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I'm really uh, sympathetic to both. Um, if you want to be on board, awesome. Let's let's have some fun. And if you're not, you know, as leaders, we have to really be um, vigilant to who's in our team because having the wrong player, you know, if you give the analogy of a of a hockey team, if you have the wrong player on the team, um, it could quickly bring down the whole bunch. Mm. And and you know, some of which we had really great coaching sessions and and are making huge headway even today. You know, from 16 to 18 months ago, wow, I've seen a true transformation. And for others, they just haven't been able to grasp it. And um, two things have happened. Some have left on their own accord. And some we really coach and mentor and have them look at maybe there's something else out there that better suits you, which will bring you happiness because you've made it clear this isn't. Yeah. And you, what I'm really hearing what you said, what you, you're saying, Tony, is that you you and your team just knows at a fundamental level, if if your company, uh, if Roma Molding is going to grow and, and fulfill on its commitments, these core values are really important at a fundamental level. And so the, the people within the company need, need to really own those values as well. It needs to be them. It needs to be in their DNA. And when all that can come together, uh, there's cohesion uh, with, within the entire company. And that is what I'm hearing, uh, Tony, and what you're saying is what, it, what is really driving then the, the growth and the prosperity and the abundance uh, for the company and, and, and people involved. Absolutely. You know, it, this, is, um, this is as important as a skill. If you, if, you're, if you have a great skill set, if we're looking for somebody with a great skill set but you don't have culture, yeah, you, you're actually not joining the team, you, and it, it's simply because we have something so special, so unique. We have incredible human beings who, despite all odds, defy what the status quo puts in front of them. Who who make the impossible possible, and and us as leaders, we really got to be weary of who we bring in because it can it can disrupt that creativity, that that happiness, that drive and passion. And so we're really going to be picky. You know, that's the, that's the common thread that we have in this company. We're really picky who we play with. So mm-hmm. if, if you want to kind of play Nerf war with us, you really have to, you know, you really have to believe what we believe. And, and yeah. if, you know, if you do, then stand back because the progress and, and the happiness is just in abundance. And very consistent, too, with um, the famous book, probably almost everyone on the Call has read before Good to Great with Jim Collins, and one of the first things he he said that he that he found consistent with all great companies is that at some point, not necessarily was always like this, but at some point the company did the work to get to get the right people on on the bus, and uh, it sounds like that's the, one of the transformations that Roma Molding has gone through in the last couple of years. You're you're absolutely right, and I'll just make this point because it's very important. In in our 40 minutes or so we've had our conversation, yeah, I didn't speak about our product once. Although we love and we're insanely yeah. great at creating great products, it's really the people. Absolutely. And how many how many team members do you have listening into this call right now, Tony? Well, I, I know we have uh, a fan base in in uh, in a room downstairs. It's a great room, and I know we have about 20 to 25 people who are tuning in and. Uh, um, they're, they're amazing supporters, and for the ones that wish they could be in that room and have commitments, whether they're on a call center, yeah. um, I, I know they're all behind us. 
Yeah, yeah. So I really acknowledge I really acknowledge all the Roma team members listening in right now. You guys completely rock, and that that's so cool. I can actually picture that. I wish I wish we could uh, actually like have a camera go there and we could hear the roar for a minute. I feel like we're at like a hockey game or something all of a sudden. They're like, <laughs> but unfortunately, this is just a webinar. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, wh why do you think then, like you're talking about culture, you're talking about core values, and um, PBK Creative works with a lot of medium-sized organizations, and um, we don't uh, hear that get spoken about often at all in the work that we, we do with, uh, with, with different businesses in a lot of different industries. So it's something I just know at a, uh, here in Canada, I'm sure it's the same way in the U.S., doesn't get spoken about too often. Why do you think that is? Tony, and, and what do you think stopping organizations from doing more work in this area of corporate culture and uh, creating the right values and working, working with team members to make sure the right people are on the bus and working with them to make sure uh, that, that they've adopted those core values? What, what do you think stopping organizations from doing this work? Well, well here's the thing. Um, if someone would have said company culture 10 years ago, yeah. um, it would be really foreign. If you said company culture five years ago, you'd probably get, I heard something along that line. And, you know, the monster companies were doing that, the Googles, the Facebooks. Um, it, they had started to develop that. You had seen that in some of the ads. Um, you ask company culture today, it's starting to become prevalent. And, and there's, there's speakers that now are starting to speak on the importance of culture. But, you know, 2012 actually marks a shift in in, in, in business and it's really a shift in the um, um, in the mindset of people and I'm really cautious of that I'm really I'm really aware of that and I think what stops people from adopting culture is because it's different hmm. it's it's, um, it's a completely different strategy mm -hmm. you actually have to use the word trust and you actually have to mean it because when you take on um, culture you're actually at the highest level of transparency. Uh, again, I have no doors on an office. I don't lock my office. I don't, uh, you know, my computer's open and, and for everybody to see. You really have to be it and you have to embody it. And there's a lot of vulnerability there. And I know for some leaders, especially, you know, some of the older leaders out there, that, that never had to happen before. And it was okay. You'd still produce results. So I'm really sympathetic that, that change um, is is something that's very different. It's very different and, and looks completely different. Um, we live in a world where we try to hide everything. I, I meet people and say, well, I don't have Facebook. I'm a teacher. Or I don't have Facebook. I, I work with the police. And, and uh, you know, I, I chuckle sometimes. I say, unless you're FBI or CSIS or, or some spy agency, um, we're all just people. We, we might have different roles in society, but we're just people. And we're all out for the same cause, to, to have happiness in our lives and to spread that. Let's just be open and, and transparent and imagine a world we can create. So it's a whole mindset. And universities and colleges are still teaching the old way of how to do things. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great segue. You know, I asked you, Tony, a week ago when we were chatting about creating this great webinar, and I said, you know, what are the secrets, Tony? Um, well, you know, what, 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 is, what causes? Uh, culture, what causes happiness, what causes growth, and you, you said back to me, I think it's three things, Andrew, and you've already spoken well about the first one, it's trust, you know, trusting myself, trusting others, and, and, I, and you've just uh, created a great segue into the second one, and, uh, and I'll let you speak about that, transparency and uh, communication, so you want to emphasize that a little more for everybody? Yeah, for sure, um, y you know, we just seen it last night. We had the presidential um, debate there, the U.S. presidential debate, and y you see two individuals up there. But you really, you really don't know who Barack Obama really is, or, 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 or Mitt Romney, or whatever the case may be. You know, as a leader, if you want to lead a congregation, if you want, if you want people to run with you, you got to tell them who you are, and you got to really care about people. You got to be transparent in doing that. And you have to hold yourself to a higher level of accountability and a higher level of communication. Um, it's just so important. You know, some of the people I look up to in my life embody transparency and communication. 
they over communicate and, and they're really clear on their conviction and all of their actions, whether it be through Facebook or Twitter or any social media component, all align. You know, you can't be one way at work and one way at home. That's not being transparent. That's being phony. You know, so when leaders, um, and, and for all the leaders out there, believe me, if you up the game in communication and you, you show people this is actually who I am. I, I wear T-shirts like you and I mow the lawn and, and, and yes, I eat in the lunchroom just like you do. Because I think for a lot of leaders, um, the way I look at leadership is I'm kind of like a right winger on a, on a hockey team, but there's a centerman and there's a, a midfield and there's a goalie. And, and without everybody, uh, you know, success is not possible. And when you do lead through transparency and communication, what happens is, there's no gossip. People can't talk about anything because they know everything. <laughs> and, um, you know, through that, it's, it's just that in itself leads to happiness. And, and yeah. you know, our team, our team members got to feel um, that they, they know everything that's going on and there's no hidden agenda and, and, and that there's security with themselves and that they feel really great every day. I, I really get that. You know, I get a lot of questions all the time. You know, how, Andrew, how should I use, how should I use Facebook? Personally, so it's sort of on the personal end, sure. and uh, you did mention social media there for a minute, and you know that you see people using it a, uh, a plethora of different ways. Some people use it for just strictly personal, like they have like the like the personal life, and uh, if, if they have any uh, business uh, a contact, they would definitely not be uh, connected to that to them on on Facebook because that would broach the personal line. Then you see other people on Facebook, and they use it strictly for business. Uh, you might see some of your your um, uh, business colleagues, if you're listening in, uh, use Facebook like that. Those are the type of people that uh, they only post blog articles. It's like blog article after blog article after blog article. And then th then there's, uh, I think, people like you and I, Tony, who use uh, Facebook just to be ourselves. Um, we we share our life as, as, as open and transparent uh, as 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 we can. And with that comes comes business, and and with that comes comes personal. And uh, I think that's really cool because I think that's the only reason you and I ever connected in the first place. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I think what you and I, uh, first of all, for those listening, how Tony and I actually met was I, I added Tony on Facebook because we had about 100 mutual friends. And I didn't actually know Tony. <laughs> I didn't know him at all. But I liked his 100 mutual friends. I, <laughs> I respected them. There are people that um, stood for their own greatness and the greatness of others. And therefore, I figured Tony would be a, would be a good, good good guy as well. And, uh, and, you know, thinking back, Tony, I think the, the things that you and I uh, had connected with the most had nothing to do with the fact that TBK Creative builds great websites and Roma Molding builds great frames. I don't remember liking each other's posts around that at all. What I remember occasionally is the fact that we would post things that were more inspiring and stood for human greatness. And, and, uh, and we, would, we would actually engage more at that level. Um, so I think that's really, really neat. Um, and it's being, you know, to speak into Tony, your point about the fact that you have one life and uh, why not, if you're going to use social media, just use it like that. The other, the other thing um, that I, that I, I've noticed about your company um, and I, and I would love for you to share a little bit more about this, but you have a, uh, I, I believe it's in every quarter, every quarter, your hands, all hands meeting, Tony, yeah. is it every, for every four months. It's a, it's every quarter. Yeah. Every, we do. We do four a year, and yeah. Do you want me to get into that? Uh, I want to use like, example. I'll I'll create. I want to share one piece about that, but then right. I'd like for you, Tony, if you could share why you guys do it and what 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 um, you feel Roma Molding is is taking from from that. As Great, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but basically, t uh, Tony and his great team holds uh, uh, one uh, 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 frequent um, meetings that are actually webcasted out, so they they host a an event um, and they invite everybody to it. They invite their, their vendor partners, they invite their customers, they invite their, their competition to this all hands meeting. And it's basically them talking about the things that are happening at Roma Molding. And they actually stream it live on Facebook. And that's where I got the opportunity to see the all hands meeting. And one thing stood out to speak into your point here, Tony, I thought a really long roundabout way to come back to your point about transparency is that um, what I was really impressed with was you and your, your great team members are actually talking about goals that you're setting for your department in front of hundreds or thousands of people. And what's really um, great about that and scary about that is 
well, what's great about that is um, there's probably more motivation now to, to actually fulfill on the goal. And what's scary about that is you really don't want to have to fail at the goal and have to go up at the all, next all hands meeting in three or four months and actually say, hey, guys, I didn't achieve that goal. And I think that speaks into transparency really well. So if you want to speak more about that, uh, Tony, feel free. Yeah, you know, talking about transparency communication, I, I don't think there's uh, another avenue that we use to over communicate and show how transparent of a company we are. Um, we actually close down our company four times a year for this meeting. It's a, a, it started out to be a 45 minute meeting and now we're at an hour and 45 minutes for the meeting. And really what, what this meeting is, is a meeting where every warehouse and every office we we own and operate actually congregates whether you're around the screen or whether you're live here in Toronto around our team and we put on a presentation it's actually an amazing show which we show everything of what's happening in the company whether it be progress updates on new hires or um, we always try to give a, a tip for all leaders out there of, of becoming even greater leaders and tips on happiness and, and tips on um, how to fulfill on goals and things like that. We always try to inspire and learn. Um, mm -hmm. And then it just goes into various team areas and we talk whether we have new IT initiatives or whether we're coming out with our new super duper website for January or whatever the case may be. You know, the greatest thing that I can say, um, well, before I say that, it's just overwhelmingly, I'm so humbled when I see our team go up there and tell the world what their goals are. Like the leadership that yeah. they possess, the, the courage that they possess to go out there, whether they know they can do it or not, are, are putting it out there in the world and saying, I'm committing to this no matter what, and I'm going to do everything in my power to hit it. Now, is everybody going to hit everything? Probably not. But I'll tell you, we're all going to help each other in one way, shape, or form, whether it's John's goals or Don's goals or Joanne's goals. We're all going to help each other to do everything in our power to, to ensure everything, everybody's hitting those goals. And, mm. you know, to sit back and have our customers log on, remember we have 6,000 dealers, and, yeah. and to have them log on and really get, wow, there's people in, a, in, a, in, a, in an office somewhere in the U.S. or Canada actually making my – my frame for my house or my mirror and getting to see who they are is really uh, rewarding and, and not to mention the energy is that day and the day after is over the top there's high fives there's hugs and kisses and every there's a sense of unity and and I'm telling you it's uh, over the over the scale of any happiness I've I've ever experienced yeah it's really remarkable if um uh, really quickly, if, if anyone listening wants to get on, in on the next one, how would they do that, Tony? Um, well, we stream it live through our Facebook um, link, uh, yeah. so Roma Molding Facebook, and you'll see there's um, actually 56, 56, 5, 6 days till our next All Hands meeting. Great. Go team. And um, if you want to see any prior All Hands meetings, you just go on uh, YouTube or Google and press Roma Molding All Hands meeting videos. And they're all out there for everybody to watch and see, and feel free to look at them. Great. So it's facebook.com forward slash Roma Molding. Now, can you uh, dive right into progress then as, uh, for this last piece, Tony? Sure. I'm very curious what you mean by that. Yeah, you know, people, people, think, um, people think that happiness comes from achieving something. You know, well, I, I, when I get that Ferrari, I'm going to be so happy. Or when I get that... You know, oh, if I could just lose that two more pounds, I'll really be happy. It, what, what people really don't realize is it's in the getting to that car or to that goal or to that whatever aspires you is what the happiness is. You know, I was uh, working with various team members here in our company, and we had several goals in marketing. And it was really the fun was really progressing around how do we achieve our goal. And when when I use progress as a as a stepping stone for happiness, you know, when you feel like you're growing, when you feel like you've you've made an impact and you're a better person than you than you were yesterday, really, I think that's the high order bit for happiness. That feeling that you get that I accomplished that, or I wow, I did better than I did last year, and continuously growing because I think um, 
you know, life is not like him hitting a summit of Mount Everest. I don't think there's a peak to progress. I don't think there's a peak to, to, to ultimate euphoria or happiness. I think life just allows us to be happy every day. If we could just step back and look at that, you know, the progress of getting there is really the happiness in itself. Really a great way to end the call. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, you know, it's not, like, as you said, it's not just having something, but it's knowing that you're actually making ground. And I know in my, my life when, when I can really accomplish something personally that's um, bigger for me in terms of my own goals than what I have in the past, um, it feels, it just in that moment feels so good. And, and you're right, it's not about, you know, just having that, that new car that really wears off really, uh, really fast. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, Tony. What, 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 what are you most proud of right now at Roma Moldy? I would say I'm most proud of our people. Um, the people here make me want to jump out of bed every day. Um, <laughs> They make me want to push harder, and they make me want to, you know, just go the extra level. I'm so proud of every single human being and what they've accomplished, um, what they're up to in their lives. I'm, I'm honored, and I'm honored to be part of such a, a, a great group of people who, despite whatever's in front of them, believe in challenging the status quo, believe that everything is truly possible. And let me tell you, when you're when you're playing in an arena where you put those people all together, look out because it's just you can't but help feel that happiness and that drive and determination. It's 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 um it infuses, it becomes part of you and um yeah. that's what I'm most proud of, seeing seeing what they are doing. Yeah, yeah. And I and what I really, you know, acknowledge you for, Tony, is um is your your commitment to to the people that, that surround you in your life. It's authentic, it's real. Uh, I've known you enough now that I know it's something that deeply at a core matters to you, and I really acknowledge you uh, for that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I want to I want to make sure that your vision that that you've created gets out there because we're recording this call. It's going to be on YouTube. More and more people will see it in the future. You know, when <clears throat> you were talking with me a couple of weeks ago, Tony, uh, you told me about the Zappos story, and I said, you know. I I think you're really building the Zappos of Canada. Would you say that? And you said, you know, yeah, you could you could call it that. But Andrew, you want to want to know what my real real vision and goal is? And I said, what's that, Tony? And uh, you said, I want to build the happiest company in Canada. That's and I want to yeah. I want to I want to make sure uh, that gets out there. Um, and do you want to speak into that at all, Tony, and, and really share what, you, what the bigger vision is with, with Roma Molding and uh, supporting other companies to do the same? Yeah, the, you know, the high-order the high, the high bid here is really to blur the lines between work and play, and we mean it. You know, when we walk in this, in this office, I, I have to pinch myself. I don't know if I'm working or I'm playing. And I believe, as an individual, that going to work, uh, it should it, – Going to work and having fun should be a right and not a privilege. And I know all our team here is working hard to build the happiest company in Canada. Yeah. And um, and I'm so committed, and I know our team is, and I, I can see it and taste it and feel it. And um, when, when that's complete, we're, we're hoping to take what we've done and really infuse that in other companies. Because imagine, Andrew, imagine the world we'd live in if everybody went to work happy. We would have happier marriages. We would have happier children. We would have happier communities. Um, and then just imagine what happens from there. I mean, it, it just mm. continues to spawn, and, and that's really the higher order bit. I completely uh, love it. I'm enrolled by it, and in in any way possible, I'm I'm here. And I know the TBK Creative team as well. Tony is here to help you and your great team fulfill on that that vision and mission. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so from, from, from here, is there any last words that you want to share with anybody? And, and please, for sure, tell, tell everybody where they can reach uh, Roma Molding, you know, socially with your Twitter, Facebook, your website and stuff. Sure. I mean, it, you know, today with social media, it's very easy. If, if, you want to follow, if you want to see what we're doing on Facebook, you can follow us at uh, Facebook forward slash Roma Molding. And you can see all the neat things we do there and, and really an insight into our many videos. And our you can see some of the Nerf fights and wars that we have there, which are really a blast. Uh -uh. You can follow us on Twitter. 
um, which is again Roma Molding, and or feel free to uh, come in and take a tour of our facility if you're interested in seeing what we're doing and, and would like uh, would like to see it firsthand. We actually are open for tours where you can call and and make an appointment and um, and we'd love to show you our our facility. And if lastly, I can just you know note to any business leader is you know we're committed to changing the world. We're committing to to make it a better place, a happier place. And if we can help in any way, shape, or form, feel free yeah. to reach out, and uh, we'll do our part to help you. Yeah, yeah, and I know with uh, with the vision that 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 your team's created, that that's very possible, and it's possible uh, with anybody listening in on this call as well. I think that's one of the messages that I'm really taking away from the conversation today. Uh, this call is recorded. I want to I want everyone to know that again. It's going to be up on on YouTube, and it's just one of those calls that you want to share uh, with with other business leaders in in your life as well. So I really encourage um, people to do that once this gets out there in public on, on the web. I think it's one of those one of those really important messages that we want to get across, especially with all the uh, all the negative conversation that's going on here in North America around the economy. Let's not pay attention to it. Let's really stand for what's possible, and let's go and create our future. Tony, thank you so much uh, for being here. It's been my pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, all the leaders on this call. You're great people, and I acknowledge you for taking the time to really uh, listen in and, 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 and really standing for your own business success and growth. Have a great day, everyone. <music>